All right, welcome to another episode of Booth Ross and the Joy of Mathing. Episode 12.3, we are doing complex calculations, which sounds really complex. <laughs> that was a knee slapper. Um, so we're going to go ahead and talk about converting first between the two forms, which we actually did in 12.1, so this shouldn't be too hard. Now, you're used to probably seeing a complex number written in this form, a plus bi. Um, that's totally fine, but if you remember when we graph, like, for instance, 2 plus 3i, if we graph that on the imaginary plane, the y-axis is always the imaginary plane, and the x-axis is the real plane. So you'd go over to up 3i this way, okay? So for that reason, the x value is like the a, and the y value is like the b. So they actually mean the same thing. We're just going to use this exclusively. Now, if you recall from 12.1... We know that x is the same thing as r times cosine of theta, and y is r times sine of theta. So we can just do a direct substitution, where we substitute r cosine theta for x and r sine theta for y. So we'd get r cosine of theta plus i r sine of theta. Now this isn't actually how they usually write it. They do one simple thing where they factor out our greatest common factor. So it's usually written r times cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Um, shorthand. We all like shorthand. That's really long. I'd much rather write it this way than this way, right? But there's a shorthand for the polar form. So we just use the first letter. Uh, so we use the c for cosine, the i for the imaginary number, and the s for sine. And we just write it r cis theta. That is the shorthand. So let's go ahead and talk about some special features. So when it comes to multiplying two complex numbers in rectangular form, so let's say I had like 1 plus 2i and 2 minus 3i. In order to do this in rectangular form, you'd FOIL, combine like terms, no big deal, right? Okay, um, in polar form, you actually do the same thing because you would have, remember, cosine of theta 1 plus i sine of theta 2. And then um, we're multiplying, oops, r times, r2 times uh, cosine of theta 2 plus i sine of theta 2. Well, here's the deal. When you distribute, when you FOIL, and when you use some special trig properties, we get to a final answer of r1 times r2, which should make sense because we should multiply those together. But then all the nastiness that's in here simply simplifies to cis, so cosine and sine, of theta1 plus theta2. Beautiful. Believe it or not, the division's not too much harder because you literally just divide instead. So R1 divided by R2, cis. And then instead of adding, we, you're right, subtract. All right. So um, if you want a proof of this, I just let me know, and I will actually like show the full process of the proof of why this first one works. Um, but it does use some trig properties and so on. Um, so then powers of complex numbers... Now, when you're raising something to a power, that's just the same thing as multiplying over and over and over again. So I could write this as r cis of theta to the n, right? So we're raising all that to the nth power. Well, that's just the same thing as doing r cis theta times r cis theta times r cis theta. You get the point. And we're doing that n times. Okay? So for that reason... We're going to be multiplying the r's together. You'll have r times r times r times r n times, which is the same thing as r to the n. And then, oops, that's not right right there. And then you'll be adding theta together n times as well. So we'll do n times theta. And that would be the power rule. So let's go ahead and use these. On a few problems. 
So we've got this first one, um, z times w and then z over w, and we've got the two z's. So I'm going to use shorthand for all these. So z times w is going to be the same thing as the radiuses multiplied together, so 10 times 5. And then I'm going to add the angles together, 85 and 20. You just use them once. So one of the 85, one of the 20. And so you get 50 cis 105 degrees. Let's do the other one, dividing. So we do 10 divided by 5, cis 85 minus 20 this time. So you subtract the angles. So you get 2, not cosine, but cis, because um, we need both cosine and sine, of 65 degrees. All right. Um, if you want, you can skip this next one, because it's basically the same idea. I'm just using radians but same kind of general rule. So ZW would be 36 times nine, cis um, five pi twelfths plus pi over eight. Well, 36 times nine is 324. I need a common denominator, so that's the only reason this one's a little tricky. So five pi twelfths and pi eighths um, if we get both of them to be over 24, so this one I multiply by 2 over 2, and this one by 3 over 3, I would get 10 pi twelfths and 3 pi, or sorry, 20 fourths and 3 pi 20 fourths. Let's erase that. So we're going to go ahead and add those together. So 10 plus thir 3 is 13 pi over 24. So that's the one answer. And then just dividing, you'll do 36 divided by 9, cis, um, and then you're just going to subtract those. Um, so 10 pi 24th minus 3 pi 24th, which is going to give us an answer of 4 cis 7 pi over 24. There's your answer.